The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to church on this beautiful autumnal morning. We look slightly fewer in numbers, um, but we will still, uh, it's so good to gather together um, to praise God, to hear his word, to pray, um, and to be his church. We're going to start with um, a few notices, um, and I promise I won't get too excited about the APCM this time, um, but do, uh, just to remind you that the APCM is this Wednesday at 7.30, uh, and I'd love to encourage as many of you as can to attend via Zoom. Uh, we're going to send out the link again. I think we've already sent it out this week uh, with uh, a set of the um, reports that we're going to be looking at at APCM. Uh, but if you can do Zoom, uh, please do, because that's just going to be so much safer at the moment. Um, if you have been watching the news of Nottinghamshire uh, and getting worried, um, I want to reassure you that until we're told to stop, uh, we will still be doing our church services. Uh, so um, our, our Sunday services and the, the Thursday one at St. Mary's will keep on going. But some of our other things uh, may move to more online ways of working. Um, so one example of that is that morning prayer, uh, we had been doing that uh, in person in here and in St. Mary's uh, during the week. We're going to start doing our Facebook Live morning prayer, so you'd be welcome to join us uh, on Facebook for morning prayer at 8.30 uh, every weekday morning apart from Friday. Uh, and also, uh, if you're part of the Real Life course, um, hopefully you've received an email. But if you haven't, uh, just to let you know that that is going to be going online as well. Uh, so we won't be meeting together for the Real Life course. We'll be doing that via Zoom. Um, I think that's all the notices I've got for today. I didn't get too excited. That was much quicker. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Um, we are going to uh, worship God with our um, liturgy now. Um, so this is going back through the story of the last few weeks that we've uh, been looking at God's rescue plan through Moses. Um, and so would you like to uh, say the bit in bold when, um, so I'll say the, the bit in not bold, you say the bit in bold. Um, and again, if you want to be imagining what that story might have looked like um, or what that looks like for you uh, today. God, when we are in trouble... You, you hear, hear our, our cry. cry. When we call out to you, you, you come, come to, to our, our rescue. rescue. Though we are weak, you, you are, are with us. us. Though we feel inadequate, you, you choose to, to work, work through us. us. When we were still trapped, you, you brought, brought us freedom. freedom. Though faced with danger, you became our protection. When we cannot see the way ahead, you, you guide, guide us. When what is ahead seems impossible, Nothing, Nothing is, is impossible, impossible for you. you. When we are in need, you, you provide, provide for us. us. When we are hungry, you, you are, are our food. food. When we complain about our situations, have, have mercy, mercy on us. us. When we are dry and weary, revive us. us. When we come to you, you, you speak, speak to us. us. All through our lives, your, your word, word is true. true. When we lose our way, you, you are, are still God. God. When we are faithless, you, you remain, remain faithful. faithful. I think that's the last one. It is. Great, thank you. Um, we're going to be hearing a little bit about that, uh, that last chunk um, today in our sermon. Judith's going to be speaking to us um, about how we are, even though we're faithless, even though we um, turn away from God and drift our own direction, God is still faithful. Um, and so we're going to uh, do a song now. Um, it's called Heal Our Land. We did it a couple of weeks ago. Um, and it really just helps us to think about what it might look like, um, how we might come to God and ask him to, um, to be faithful to us, to continue to be faithful. Um, so uh, unfortunately, we can't sing, but would you like to stand? And we're going to do um, some simple sign language and actions for it.
As we stay standing, let's pray the prayer for today. Almighty God, you have made us for yourself, and our hearts are restless till they find their rest in you. Pour your love into our hearts and draw us to yourself, and so bring us at last to your heavenly city, where we shall see you face to face. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we'd like to take a seat as we have our reading. Good morning, everybody. I have to get organised with masks and glasses and everything else. The reading is from Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 to 14. The golden calf. When the people saw that Moses was so longing coming down from the mountain, they gathered around Aaron and said, Come, make us gods who will go before us. As for this fellow Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt, we don't know what has happened to him. Aaron answered them, Take off the gold earrings that your wives, your sons, and your daughters are wearing, and bring them to me. So all the people took off their earrings and brought them to Aaron. He took what they handed him and made it into an idol cast in the shape of a calf, fashioning it with a tool. Then they said, These are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar in front of the calf and announced, Tomorrow there will be a festival to the Lord. So the next day, the people rose early and sacrificed burnt offerings and presented fellowship offerings. Afterwards, they sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go down because your people, whom you brought up out of Egypt, have become corrupt. They have been quick to turn away from what I commanded them and have made themselves an idol 
cast in the shape of a calf. They have bowed down to it and sacrificed to it and have said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. I have seen these people, the Lord said to Moses, and they are a stiff-necked people. Now leave me alone so that my anger may burn against them and that I may destroy them. Then I will make you into a great nation. But Moses sought the favor of the Lord his God. O oh Lord, he said, why should your anger burn against your people, whom you brought out of Egypt with great power and a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent, intent that he brought them out, to kill them in the mountains and to wipe them off the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce anger, relent, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember your servants, Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, to whom you swore by your own self, I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give your descendants all this land I promised them, and it will be their inheritance forever. Then the Lord relented and did not bring on his people the disaster he had threatened. This is the word of the Lord. Do you ever hear a bit of the Bible and think, that's not what I was expecting the Bible to say? Um, Judith is going to come and speak to us. I'm really excited to hear what you have to say, Judith. So can I pray for you before yeah, you speak? Do. Father, thank you for your word. Um, thank you that uh, you give us understanding of it. Please would you help Judith to speak now the things that you want us to hear. Would you help us to hear them? Um, and where we need to, would you help us to put them into action as well? Amen. Good morning. Good morning. I've got a question for you. Which team are you on? Oh. I wonder what she means. Is this one of those, the answer's a squirrel, but I think it's supposed to be Jesus sort of questions. Which team are you on? Let me help you a bit. Are you on God's team? Or are you on the other team? God's team needs a big thumbs up. The other team can have a thumbs down. As we, as we think about this. The Israelites are out in the desert. God's brought them out of Egypt, as we've seen over the last few weeks. They crossed out of, out, yeah, out of Egypt, they crossed the Red Sea. And fairly soon before this bit that Pauline's read for us, God, through Moses, had given them the Ten Commandments. God had set out, if you're going to be on my team, I'll call you napping, if you're going to be on my team, this is how you've got to live. And the first two commandments were these. I'm the Lord your God. You shall have no other gods apart from me. And then, you shall not make an idol. There's loads more, but we'll just think about those two for today, otherwise we'll be here a long time. If you're going to be on my team, says God, this is how it needs to be. And the people heard what God had said. They listened, and they said, yeah. Yeah, we're going to be on God's team. You read in chapter 24, whatever the Lord says, we will do. We are God's team. They were his people. And all was fine for a while. 
Because after Moses had presented the commandments and some of the other laws, God told Moses to go up the mountain and meet with him. And he left the people in the care of Isaac. They were God's team. They were following the commandments. All was good. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days. Now, depending on your perspective, I mean, when you're desperate for your birthday or for Christmas, 40 days goes on forever, doesn't it? But, you know, in the big scheme of things, 40 days isn't that long, is it? You know, a month and a week, something like that, a little bit more. But they were God's team, so it was all all right. Oh, you've gone to sleep. They were God's team, so it was okay. But then, oh dear. You see, they didn't know how long Moses would be. They didn't know when he'd come back. They didn't even really know if he'd come back. And they began to feel a bit abandoned and a bit lost. Being on God's team was getting a bit hard because they couldn't actually see God they couldn't hear God's voice they'd been hearing what God wanted through Moses and now Moses wasn't there to tell them what God was saying and they began to feel a bit lost And being God's team was hard. And they began to think, well, you know when we lived in Egypt, the people had gods, they worshipped things that they could see. That would be easy, wouldn't it? So they um, they tell Aaron, who's who's Moses' deputy, "Um, we want want an idol, we want a god that we can see and, and touch. And Aaron, because he was a good leader, said, no, 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 we are God's team. Now, sadly, Aaron didn't. Aaron said, okay. And collected up the jewellery. You see, they'd broken that covenant promise. They'd given up as God's team and they'd become a different team. The jewellery wasn't bad in itself. It was actually what they collected up before they left Egypt, and it was going to be used to make the tabernacle for them to worship in. But they've given up on God's team. God, of course, sees what's happened. They, Aaron makes this golden calf and he puts it there. It probably looked quite impressive, particularly shining in the sun. And God says to Moses, you better get yourself down this mountain because your people who you brought out of Egypt have made a mess of things. You see, before, God said, they're my people who I brought out of Egypt because they were God's team. But now, they've become the other team. So God refers to them, to Moses, as your people. They've changed team. Because they can only be God's people when they're in a relationship with God, when they're in his team. And when they're not in God's team, when in the other team, they're not God's people anymore. Moses prays, and it's restored. Now, obviously, we're in God's team, aren't we? And we would never, never never do anything like the Israelites did, would we? Well, 
well, of course we'd like to say no. And of course we're going to say no in front of each other. But actually, if we're really honest, do we sometimes get pulled away from God's team to the other team? Because it gets hard sometimes. And things get in the way. In our prayer earlier, we all joined in with these words. You have made us for yourself and our hearts are restless until we find our rest in you. Those are the words of St. Augustine. And somebody once explained it to me like this and it, it stuck, so let me share it with you. God made human beings to worship him. When we were created, God put something in us that causes us to worship. And it's that idea of a God-shaped hole. You know those jigsaws you get where you have a wooden shape and it has to go and, and fill that hole and it's got to be the right way round to slot into the hole? We've all got a, like a God-shaped hole within us. And that hole should be filled with God. But if it isn't filled with God, we will fill it with something else. Because holes need filling. That jigsaw needs to be completed. And sometimes a hole is filled with God and that's great. But sometimes other things creep in and start to fill it as well. We set off on God's team and that's where we want to be, that's what we want. I guess if we didn't, we wouldn't be here this morning. But sometimes other things creep in and we suddenly realise actually we're not fully on God's team anymore. We've got ourselves a little bit onto a different team. We need to come back to God. And to say, God, I want to be on your team. I want to remember not to take my eyes off you and worship other things, but to look at you and be on your team. Shall we just say a prayer together? Lord, thank you that you call us to be on your team. And Lord, when we lose sight of that, when we slip to a different team, Lord, would you call us back and put us back firmly on your team? Amen. I don't know about you. Um, what we thought we'd do is we'll, uh, we'll come to our response time now because I want us to dive straight into uh, coming to some kind of response to this. So you should find in your pews uh, these, which are uh, crowns uh, getting ready to be made. Um, so some, I know some people have already started to uh, decorate them, uh, which is great. Um, and uh, what we're going to do as the uh, band play uh, for us is I'd love you to uh, decorate your crown um, but who do you think this crown is for? Someone was pointing up. This crown, uh, if, you, if you've made it up, you'll notice it's not really your size. 
okay? It's not a crown that's made for you. Uh, So we wanted to make a crown for God this morning to say, God, you're the one who deserves all our praise and honor and glory. Uh, We're going to give our worship to God this morning. So particularly if you're thinking, I want to respond to what Judith was saying, I want to say, God, you're the king of my life. You've got that place in the center of my life. Why not write God's name uh, on the crown as you decorate it? uh, And we'll offer it to him in praise. Uh, And as the band play, uh, obviously we can't sing along, uh, but something that someone told us last week that's really helpful is um, you can imagine singing along at the top of your voice in your head. Uh, And it's not quite the same, but it, it goes some way towards it. So why not imagine praising God with all your heart right now and giving him the crown? Uh, of your life.
God, we love you. Amen. Um, we're going to uh, do some prayers now, uh, and these are interactive prayers, uh, and you might even find yourself learning some geography while you do these prayers as well. So these That's are like my favorite Ruth, sort of prayers. Ruth's ever. favorite prayers ever. So Ruth's going to get really excited by these prayers, because um, what we want to focus on praying for today is mission around the world. As a church, uh, we support lots of different people who are doing God's work in all different places around the world. And we want a chance to just briefly pray for each one of them today. Uh, and there's also a mission update uh, to tell you what's going on. Uh, and that's available on the way out um, if you haven't received one of those already. Um, but, so we're going to try and pray for these things. And the way this is interactive is we're going to see if we can ask you to face the right direction for where the prayers are going to be. Um, so do you want to stand up? Dave, you better get this right, because you are so important in this mission team. Okay, um, we'll, we'll do a simple practice. Can we, can we Let, first out, yeah, yeah, that, we're gonna out do which sim- way? Okay, yeah, that's cool. what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Right. That's what we're doing. Shh. So I don't know why you've got a microphone. You're just pointing. Um, <laughs> so first of all, we're going to see if we know which way's north, west, south, and east. Joseph's uh, on it. So um, turn and face north. Joe's definitely not on it. Yeah, we're, so we're going with north that way. Uh, south. That's nice and easy. D- now, now you've got to do your never reach shredded wheat. West. And east. Fantastic, we've got those sorted. Right, now we're going to see if we can do this. Um, so the first area that we're going to pray for is Menina Dancer, which is in Brazil. So why don't you turn and face which way you think Brazil is? I think, we're all, I think we're going for that direction. Southwest, Ruth. Yeah. It's fine, they weren't looking at me, they don't know I got it wrong. Yeah, but the camera was. Okay. Um, so everyone on the internet just saw you get that wrong. Um, and Menina Dancer reaches out to girls as young as 10 uh, along the motorway, uh, girls who need protection. Um, so we're going to pray for them now, and we're going to pray, God, particularly, will you protect them against coronavirus among the girls that are there and the staff that work in the pink house? So God, we pray for Menina Dancer now. Amen. Amen. Okay, next uh, we're going to uh, the Philippines to streetlight in Manila. Uh, so who, who reckons they know which direction to look for the Philippines? I think we're going this way. Uh, so it's kind of southeast, but more east than south. Uh, that's what people are nodding at me for that. Um, and some of the projects there have had to be closed due to the pandemic. pandemic. Um, so God, we pray for the team at Kanlungan Center. And we pray for extra funding to be able to give out food to the street children and to the poorest families there. Amen. Okay, Albania is next. Uh, So Sean Thompson is in Albania. Um, So which direction are we facing for Albania? Um, I'm I'm going with Peter Frith here. He thinks it's uh, just a little bit more east than the last one. Uh, So you're keeping going in roughly the same direction. Um, And and God, we pray that Sean is able to reach out to the Albanian people to tell them about Jesus and that he and his family will stay safe from coronavirus. Okay, uh, next we're going to China uh, for international China concern. Um, So China's quite a big country, so you've got a wider margin for error, um, but it's going to be kind of east. So if you're all facing me, that's probably the right kind of direction. Oh, some, some people are, are wanting you to go slightly more to the southeast. I'd be happy with you going east, um, but uh, there are some people who are really concerned we get this right. Um, an international China concern, love and care for disabled and abandoned children in China. Um, and so, God, we want to thank you uh, that Rachel and Matt are safe here in the UK, um, but we pray, because their heart is still in Changsha, uh, we pray for good communications with the children and staff in the projects, and we pray that you would be able to get them back there as soon as possible. Amen. Um, next is the Middle East. Um, so we're going to kind of go slightly more south again for that. So towards that corner again. Most, most of our mission is in that corner of the church, apparently. Um, and, 
Um, Esther works in the Middle East, mostly with refugees from war-torn countries. Um, so, God, we pray for protection over Esther, and we pray for guidance as she considers her present and her future. Amen. Okay, uh, I'm going to be struggling with this one. Next, we're going to Honduras. South America. Great. I knew that. Central. Central, Central America. So we're going, going towards that corner of the church over there. Children of Honduras Trust. Um, and the communities served by the Children of Honduras Trust have very little paid work and are struggling with poverty. So God, we pray that enough food and essentials will be provided for the poorest communities that they serve in Honduras. Amen. Okay, next we're going to Uganda. Um, so that's definitely going to be sat somewhere to the south of us, isn't it? Um, so let's face that direction for Uganda. And this is for parental care ministries in Uganda. And God, we pray for Pastor Emmy and Sarah in their ministry to the poor children and young people in Uganda. Uganda has a really severe lockdown, making life extremely difficult for everyone. So God, we pray for your help for them. Amen. Okay, we're moving closer to home now. Um, so we're next going to pray for Bob Goody and British Youth for Christ. Um, does anyone know which direction Bob's office is in from here? Where does Bob work? Someone point us. We're going that way, okay? Uh, heading that direction. Uh, let's pray for Bob Goody. We thank you, God, for Bob and his commitment to sharing Jesus with young people. We thank, also thank you for um, British Youth for Christ, um, and we ask that they may be able to reach many, many young people with God's message of love and purpose for their lives. Amen. Amen. Right, next we're going for In Christ in Schools in Mansfield, um, which is in lots of different schools, but I wonder if we face towards uh, QE, uh, where Christo works as chaplain, um, uh, because we haven't faced in that direction yet. So let's go for that direction towards uh, QE School. God, we pray for all the staff of In Christ in Schools. Um, and especially at this time when it's difficult to get into schools and get uh, groups going in schools. We just pray that the message of your gospel would be heard by the children in this town. Amen. Amen. Uh, next, we're going to the Beacon Centre, uh, which hopefully you all know is uh, just over there. It's very close. Yeah, we, we, I think there was a cheer there because we know that one. Um, and... Um, God, we thank you that the beacon has been able to continue, uh, even in this limited way throughout local lockdown. And God, we pray for your protection over all the staff and volunteers and the clients at this time. Amen. Amen. Uh, this next one, uh, I'd like you all to face your nearest wall. Uh, so we're facing outwards uh, in every direction uh, as we pray for local outreach all around our parish. Um, and God, we pray for all the children who have attended uh, our things like Mini Messy Church, Film Club, Sunday Light Groups, Ladybrook Lighthouse, and the Christmas and e Easter workshops. Um, God, we feel, uh, it feels terrible to us that we can't meet up with them in our churches and our center at the moment. But we pray that the seeds sown over the uh, last years and months um, will continue to grow in each child and family. Amen. And the final one, uh, I'd like you to face yourself. Um, so this is, uh, you can look down at yourself, um, because each one of us is called to be part of God's mission. Uh, and so let's pray for ourselves, wherever we find ourselves, that we will be part of God's mission. God, I pray that you would help us to carry your light and hope and love wherever we go, whether to school or to work or to home. Um, when we're out and about in town, uh, God, would you be with us and would you help us to speak of you to those that we meet? Amen. Let's join together with the words of the Lord's Prayer as we finish uh, our prayers now. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You guys did a fantastic job in those prayers, and let's give ourselves and God a round of applause. And just before we finish, I thought it'd be great to just continue to respond in worship for a little bit longer. Um, So I'm wondering if the band could play uh, the second of the two response songs uh, for us. Um, So if you'd like to take a seat, uh, or you can stay standing, it's up to you. Uh, Do whatever you want, uh, and uh, we'll worship uh, God together some more. Uh, just a reminder, as we go out from here, um, I'd uh, like to encourage you to uh, do this in as ordered a way as possible because it just keeps everyone safe and their uh, distance from each other. Um, so I'm going to ask everyone as we go out, if you could use the center aisle to go out. So you're going to kind of file out into the, ba- into the center um, and head straight out through the back door. And we'll start at the back uh, and work our way forward. Um, so if that's all right, I'd love everyone to just uh, do that. And if you've noticed there's a bit of a queue building up, uh, maybe wait a little bit um, because uh, we want to try and keep two meters distance as we uh, leave here. Sorry? Oh, and no gathering outside, yep. Uh, that's, that's the other thing we should know. Um, and. Uh, As we move into uh, potential extra lockdown things, um, do be thinking about who you can ring this week uh, or even go old-fashioned and write someone a letter. Um, I don't know when the last time you wrote someone a letter was, um, but it's amazing to receive a letter from someone. Uh, So do be writing cards and letters to one another to encourage each other during the week. Uh, Let me pray a prayer of blessing, though, before we go. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and those you love, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.